Hello and what's up guys? Today I'm going to open up on a new chapter uh, and I will launch my new gazebo simulator video series and uh, this is a tool used by many roboticists and it is very useful and don't worry I will continue I will presume teaching you about ROS2 but uh, for now it is essential for you to get introduced to the gazebo simulator because later on I will do with you some robotics projects uh, let's say at a certain advanced level and uh, we will use for that both gazebo simulator and ROS2 in addition to other tools so I advise you to watch this video to the end because it is very important and let's start Okay, so let me open a text file in here. All right. So first, what is Gazebo Simulator? I mean, it's a simulator that simulates, let's say, the real world physics in a high fidelity. Uh, and it is actually more specifically a 3D dynamic simulator. Uh, and what do I mean by dynamic? I mean it takes into account the time during the simulation. And uh, it tries to replicate like the gravity, uh, the friction, the forces, torques, or real life conditions. And this is very essential for uh, your robotics development work. And what is wonderful about the gazebo simulator is that it allows you to integrate a multitude of sensors and it gives you actually a lot of interfaces to, uh, let's say, to visualize uh, the feedback of such sensors and to interact with the simulation. So this is very important uh, for your robotics development work. And as you will notice in my future videos, uh, you will see that I'm using Gazebo as a replacement for the hardware because currently, to be honest, I don't have any access to uh, a robotic hardware uh, that operates on ROS2. Uh, and if you are like me, then you can use Gazebo Simulator as a replacement for that. Now, if you, in case you have access to such hardware, Gazebo Simulator is still a useful tool because it allows you to test uh, your robotic design, uh, a certain control strategy or something before implementing it in real life. And this is very important and it's a very cost-effective method during your robotics development work. Uh, now, uh, of course, if you are familiar with OpenGL and uh, like uh, physics engines, uh, you will love Gazebo because it offers you uh, many physics engines like Bullet or Open Dynamics. But if you don't know about such stuff, don't worry. Uh, we will just use these physics engines during our simulation. We will not develop them or uh, like write their code or something like that. Now, uh, for the computer requirements, uh, I mean, you should have a dedicated graphical processing unit uh, for the uh, graphics display, display uh, displaying uh, uh, using the gazebo environment, of course. And uh, I'm, I'm currently using actually NVIDIA GeForce uh, card and it's working fine for me. And you need a central processing unit uh, with a core i5. And it is recommended also to have a 500 megabyte free disk space before launching Gazebo. And of course, you should use the Ubuntu operating system. Uh, and we were using it so far because this is the best operating system for running Gazebo Simulator. Now, let me jump into the installation process. In order to install Gazebo on your system, you need to follow actually, you need to follow three steps. Uh, first, you need uh, to make sure that you have uh, access uh, to the uh, open source Robotics Foundation uh, repository because uh, you need to uh, install the Gazebo uh, package from this repository. So in order to do that, uh, you will need to enter the following code. And I have included all the necessary code for the installation process in the description down below. So you can check it out. 
so this code will allow you to uh, install actually the uh, OSRF uh, repository on your Ubuntu system. But I have already installed Gazebo, so I will not run these codes right now. It's not necessary. Next, you will need to complete this uh, installation process of uh, this repository by uh, entering the follow command in order to set up the keys. You don't need to worry about the meaning of that for now. Think about it as an additional step to complete the, uh, let's say, repository installation process. Now you are ready to install Gazebo uh, just like any other package. Uh, and here you will use the sudo apt get update uh, as usual. Uh, and this is a good practice before, uh, let's say, downloading any package uh, because you need to make sure that you download the latest version of such package. Uh, also, you will use the following uh, command in order to uh, install the Gazebo 9. Uh, I'm using the uh, version 9 because it is the best uh, version to be used along with ROS2 Eloquent. If you have another, uh, let's say, distribution of ROS2, you might uh, check what is the best version of Gazebo to uh, use it with uh, such distribution. Uh, and actually, uh, recently, not like long ago, uh, they have introduced the Ignition. And uh, this is a, and this is the latest version of Gazebo. But uh, it is still very essential to learn about Gazebo for now because many people are still using it. Uh, a lot of code and simulations were uh, were uh, performed using Gazebo, so it's very essential to learn it. And maybe later on, I will teach you about Ignition. And uh, if you are interested in uh, the development work in Gazebo you should install, uh, you should use the following command in here, but of course, here you will replace the number by the specific version that you are interested in. But for now, uh, we won't use this code. We are not interested in the development. We are just going to use the Gazebo Simulator as it is. Now, after installing Gazebo Simulator, and obviously I have did uh, this before, uh, and in order to launch it, from the terminal, you will just uh, enter the command gazebo. And actually, if you run it, you will see, okay, it, it uh, gave me like some code because I don't have internet access at the moment. But don't worry, if you have internet connection, everything shall be fine. You won't see anything like that. So this is the gazebo environment. Here uh, is the, uh, like, let's say the land, the piece of land where you put your robot and etc. Now, of course, there are many options that you can use uh, when you launch gazebo. And let me show you some options. For example, uh, you can use the U option, the U command right here, in order to start uh, Gazebo Simulator as paused. So the simulation will be paused and then you have to click on the start button in the Gazebo environment. I will show you this button in a bit in order to start the simulation. And also you can use uh, the verbose uh, command right here in order, let's say, to uh, give you some description while the Gazebo Simulator is running. And this is very useful because sometimes uh, the simulator might crash or the simulation might freeze or something. And you won't know what is the error, what is, go what is wrong with the, with the simulation. And if you use verbose in such case, uh, you will see the error and what is wrong uh, directly displayed on your terminal screen. So this is very important uh, in case you faced certain errors during the simulation. And of course, you will have other options. Feel free to check them out, but, but I just wanted to give you the idea. Now, when you use the gazebo command, so for example, gazebo u, you will see that here at the button, uh, this button at the bottom, uh, it says that the simulation is stopped and you can play it by pressing in here, all right? So uh, this is how the command U will work. 
and actually when you use the command gazebo you are actually uh, running let's say two things the gazebo server uh, which is responsible for let's say for running the simulations uh, for uh, controlling uh, let's say the loops let's say uh, and all uh, let's say the command line and everything essential for the simulation let's say uh, and you run also the you are running also the gazebo client which is mainly responsible for the graphical user interface that you saw uh, in a moment uh, so you are running both uh, let's say you can consider them as nodes let's say uh, if you want to like relate it to ROS uh, but so why am I talking about this? Because sometimes you need to run a certain, let's say, recorded simulation and you need uh, the uh, sensor, uh, let's say the sensor data, the sensor that is included in the simulation, you need its data to be displayed on the terminal uh, window uh, without, let's say, uh, displaying the GUI because the GUI is computationally expensive. Uh, so. If you have, let's say, a certain, uh, I don't know, recorded simulation, you can, let's say, use a GZ server and then uh, put the file of the simulation path in here after a G server and it will be run. Uh, so something like that. Uh, but we will talk about this later on. Uh, so uh, actually after uh, like teaching you about gazebo and uh, how to use it efficiently uh, and something like that uh, and actually in the next video I will talk more about the GUI I will give you a tour and uh, show you how to use the graphical user interface of gazebo and uh, eventually just like to give you some motivation uh, I will uh, create with you uh, a project and I will go over it step by step and the project will be about a self-driving vehicle with all the obstacle avoidance and path planning capabilities and at that point I will show you how to use the gazebo simulator along with ROS2 and we will download all the necessary packages for that by then and I will use also actually the uh, RVIS2 uh, which stands for uh, ROS visualization uh, in order to create such path planning and obstacle avoidance capabilities uh, and it will be used along uh, the gazebo simulator and ROS2. So uh, I really encourage you to watch, uh, to stay tuned and watch all my videos about the uh, gazebo simulator uh, video series and uh, for now I bid you farewell and I hope to see you guys later on.